Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Lisa Lane joining us again today. Excited to have her here and a special guest. Where's your special (laughs) guest? So I'm introducing George to the world. (laughs) Oh, cute. George is is my coaching partner and often helps out with younger clients or clients who are a little shy and introverted. And uh, she spends a lot of time nesting in my hair yes oh my adorable <laughs> great oh my goodness so wait you actually use George he's part of the coaching program as well to help with adolescents families because does everyone feel like I feel like oh and it just brings smiles and joy to your face yes that's that exactly especially kids who are more sensitive or you know they're nervous about being online or that you know they don't really want to be there because mom and Dad said they have to be there, whatever. So sometimes I will bring George with me. Um, And I also love, so um, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the things today, but when I'm working with gender fluidity clients, George is actually a female, but named George. So sometimes I will say, you know, George is gender fluid too. (laughs) (laughs) Uh-huh. Which prefers to be George, but George is a female, but prefers to be George. <laughs> Wonderful. This is so adorable. Tell me about the other work that you guys do together. Yeah. So, um, you know, the thing, what, what happened in the very beginning, um, so we're celebrating, um, we're about to celebrate our third year, you know, uh, my teen life coach started in during COVID, right, right in 2020, amongst all of the things. So, Way back, if you remember, um, it's actually funny because George's green, her green uh, wings are blending with the green screen. That's why you can't see. That is so cute. Wings. That's why I didn't know when you originally said I have a guest yeah. today and you're like, hello, hello. And I'm like, I don't see anything or anyone. I, I'm- you just see her head. It's so cute. Anyway, so, um, you know, I I closed my dance studio. Um, I, was, I was running a teen mentoring program, leadership program. Uh, mentoring program with using dancing as a facilitation tool and uh, during COVID you know obviously we were all you know at home and doing all that stuff and the girls were calling and texting like please Miss Liesel we need to see you can we do Zoom and that's how my team life coach kind of came about was oh my gosh this is probably what's going to be happening more and more and more So George used to come to the studio with us um, and used to, during summer um, programs and things like that, George was with us at the studio. And so, of of course, during my Zoom sessions with the girls, they would be like, where's George? Where's George? So, of course, George would come onto my shoulder and, you know, play her games and like dance in front of them. We would do music and dance in front of them and stuff like that. So that's kind of how George came to be part of the team, you know. (laughs) <laughs> that is amazing and bringing actually, joy to generations upon generations. I love right? it. I know. So actually, I'm thinking I'm going to put her headshots on the website with our third <gasps> birthday coming up. <laughs> I mean, I don't know anything about birds, but this bird seems so calm. What yeah. I mean, George is a green, a green cheeked conure. It's okay. a, basically a mini parrot. They're just okay. smart, very social, loves to be the center of attention and in the middle of the party. And um, very smart. <laughs> so she's she already knows like mom's on the screen. So I've got to keep quiet and pay attention. And but when I if I put her on my finger, then she knows she can play and make noise. So obviously, I'm not going to do that today. Cause... Wait, but it's, it, I, I don't it really that trained, that well trained. Yeah, yeah. So and then after this, she knows she gets to go be um, with her. Um, she's got to stand right here in my office and uh then she'll go be back on the stand and get her water. Does she her. speak like a parrot? Like, or no? No, she does not. But we understand each other. Um, you know, bird behavior, like the bird, there's, um, there's a, a behavior called uh, beak banging. Okay. And that means that like, I want love, I need attention, or I want food or something like that. Um, we have little sounds and she knows three clicks, she'll click back. Um, and so she, she knows like, oh, something's up. (laughs) 
Yeah. Wow. That is amazing. Okay. So, yeah. So anyway, I, I thought, you know, it's kind of, I wanted to talk about what we have achieved over the last three years with my teen life coach. And George was like, I want to be part of that conversation. So I said, okay, you can be part of it today. <laughs> amazing. I love George. I love George. I'm getting confused, but George is a she, right? George is a she. Okay. Yes. okay that's fine. Some, some people have male names. My, my niece is named Charlie. People think she is. I get it. Okay. Just make yeah, it short. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Great. So, so yeah, I wanted to, if I can, um, I want to share um, something with the audience today and I'll, I'll talk to it as well, but I really wanted to talk about um, we just done an audit on, you know, what what was our effectiveness level um, as as my teen life coach over the last three years. And I just felt like it was it was a good time to um, just to take stock and see, like, what are the things that we're working with the most? What okay. makes us who we are, you know, um, because I, a lot of people will ask, you know, like, OK, so what what is what what have you been experiencing? Yeah. Right. So first I wanted to, um, I just wanted to say that I never thought three years ago that I would already have a team today. So, you know, we have this cute little team of people mm -hmm. and we are so representative. Um, you know, um, we are, we represent in the team, we represent, we have, a, a, a we have me who's a Gen X, we have a millennial, which is Cameron, and then we have a Gen Z, which is Serena. And, um, you know, we're representing three generations in part of our team. And also we are representing diversity in race. So, you know, um, Cameron is African-American, Serena is Latina, I'm white Caucasian, and all of us are bringing completely different life experiences and cultural values and experiences all to the table. And we were chatting the other day going like, what do we actually stand for? You know, like, well, how, do, how are we representing ourselves? And so we, we have, every year I choose like, what are our words for the year? And this year our words are compassionate embodied mindset. So compassionate is just, you know, exactly what it says. We are the container, the space that holds, um, that just holds the time and the, the space for our clients in a completely non-judgmental way. And then the other part is the embodied, you know, everything that we've experienced in our own lives, we are 100% bringing our own human experience to the table and combining it with all of the credentials and the training and the degrees and all that stuff, you know. And, and the mindset part, Jill, is like, um, you know, every time before I talk to you, before we talk to clients, we have a, a process where we empty ourselves, we empty our mind, we empty what our morning was like, we empty ourselves so that when we are 100% here, present and completely engaged with no distraction or uh, subconscious agenda, you know, and so because of that, um, I'm just proud, you know, it was like, it's, it was Valentine's Day yesterday. I'm going to, I want to love me some, my teen life coach, because, you know, we've been able to make such a big impact in such a short space of time. So I took a bit of time and I went through literally all of our client files and I was thinking, okay, what are some of the coolest things that we have seen over the last three years? So I thought I would share that with you guys today. Awesome. When we, so just for everybody who's not watching, um, on the screen, I have um, our life satisfaction survey that we use. So every time we do an intake session with a client, we conduct this interview through this particular questionnaire. And um, it's called the Rise and Thrive Questionnaire. So um, you'll... For those who are listening, the first section is really about self-care. The sec second session is about skills. Then outside support um, is the third section. And what we do there is we really um, interview them on. You see me? There I am. Okay. I Hi, I'm sorry. My, it's, every time I hit the computer, it, it, it's, it was going on and off. Go ahead. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> We're good. We're good. Um, so yeah, so you know, we'll so let's take for example the first few. 
Um, one of the titles is commitment to learning and improving. So what we'll do there is we'll say, okay, rate yourself on a scale from zero to 10. Mm -hmm. So they'll say, okay, it's in like in this example here, a four out of 10. Then we'll actually ask, okay, tell me why. And then once we've we've kind of got the, the summary of that, then we'll say, okay, in about two months time, what would you like that number to look like? And so they'll say, okay, I want it to be a seven or I want it to be a six. And so we go through all 20 questions with them in that very first session. And from there, we're then able to develop that strategy. So, you know, out of everything that you rated, what are the top ones that you really are interested in working on in terms of moving forward? And that's one of the biggest reasons that separates us from being just counselors or having just being a therapy, right? Because we're looking at what is my state today and then how do I want it to look differently given whatever my goal is, right? Whatever that period of time is. Mm -hmm. So so over time, um, I have um, kind of gone back and looked at these because it's really interesting to look at the data that comes. And out of those strategies that we have um, ended up working with with our clients, there are one, two, three, five things that um, are like that came out very clearly. So what we've learned is that when our clients engage fully in the process, so in other words, they don't reschedule, they um, do their homework at the end of every session, ready for the next week, 100% of the time they are successful literally 100% of the time. Then the other part was it, when the parents are engaged, not in a controlling way, not in a nosy kind of way, but when I am making suggestions from a parenting perspective, you know, you might you might want to do this a little differently or when you are, you know, trying to make them do their chores, go about it this way, all the stuff you and I've kind of talked about over time. Right. But mm -hmm. when they're engaged in that kind of manner, being willing to be co-coached with my clients my client succeeds 100% of the time. Then um, consistency obviously is key, right? Just always coming, even if you don't feel like coaching that day, you come anyway, because something will come out of it regardless. That reaped 100% of success. And then I looked at my longest successful tenure client was two years. Saw them for two years um, and took them from high school all the way into college. And the shortest successful tenure of a client was six weeks. So we could get results as quickly as six weeks and it could take as long as two years, depending on what it is that they're wanting to achieve, right? And then our youngest client was 10 years old. Um, and our oldest client is 24 years old. So there's a huge difference gap, gap. Mm -hmm. difference there. So then what I did was I went through all of the files and I was like, okay, let me see what the biggest themes are that are going on here. And, um, you know, we can talk about self-esteem. We can talk about motivation. We can talk about like all the general categories. Mm -hmm. But I think what I found to be the most interesting was um, the nuances within those large categories, right? So it's not just about self-esteem. It's also about... Um, how do I be in life as an introvert? Okay. Um, it's not just about being confident. It's also about how do I advocate for myself? So, so here are some of the things that I saw. It was the question of who am I really? Right. Interesting question. Good who question. Really, because, right? mm -hmm. How do others really see me? How do I regulate myself in front of people I don't know? How do I cope as an introvert? Because introversion is a challenge. Mm -hmm. And how do I advocate for myself? So that was the one part. Then the other theme was around my body, the body image stuff, right? What is, what is my image in my body? How do I take care of myself? What is my daily routine like? What are my mindfulness practices? So, you know, with girls, Absolutely. They're like, I'm fat. I'm eating too much. Boys are like, you know, I'm addicted to candy. So mm -hmm. that has got a lot to do with mind body. Right. So those are those were the things that came, that came out of that one. Then um, obviously the one 
that's very common is obviously all around adversity, right? So stress, anxiety, overwhelm, especially post COVID and all the stuff that came out from there. So that is always um, an integral part of the stuff that we're coming across. Now, here's an interesting one. I labeled it just others because it, it could be literally everyone else except me. So a lot of work was done over the last three years with relationships with parents more than I thought, I'd forgotten that anger management was a common theme. Um, another one that was very common was the values disconnect with first generation parents or first generation children. So kids born in America, but the parents come from another country. Um, what are the values and standards that could create conflict between the parents and the teenager? And then the other one that was really, um, that came up more than I actually gave it credit for was who are my people? Who are my people in this world? You know, what are my boundaries? Who and what can I control? What's in my control and what is not? Um, so that was kind of nice to see that theme come up. And then the other one was besides my body was my mind. So those are some of the, the things you and I've talked about in our, in our podcast wow. together with the motivation, the procrastination, the self-sabotage, right? You and I kind of worked on that quite a bit. So that one was common. And then here's a cool one, my future. So the, the, the my future one had an interesting diversity. So one theme that I came up with was visualizing the future. What does, how do I visualize the future? Do I even see one, right? Moving out of therapy into coaching. So many times kids who were 100% in therapy have now gotten to that zero neutral point. Like now I'm functioning productively, but I'm not yet thriving. So, um, you know, how do I transfer myself? How do I transition from being in therapy and getting counseling to now being in the coaching space and taking control, right? Um, and then the other one was... Um, linked to that it was like how do I build my life back so so very few clients I mean I was gonna say quite a few clients literally were in therapy for self-harm for suicidality for uh, drug addiction who have now gone into recovery and sober state and now are in coaching phase right how, how do they build their life back how do they not um, fall back into you know, the trauma that got them trapped in the first place. So um, more clients than I gave credit for again, which was a nice surprise. Then more and more common nowadays, I would say in the, in the last six months was the gender transitions and identity work with teenagers. More and more of that is entering our space. It's becoming okay um, for us to work with families, um, you know, getting parents on board, getting the kids to be realistic about what their expectations are, et cetera. And then I've had a handful of clients who were the entrepreneurial kids. They were getting coaching for starting their own businesses, whether they were 15 years old or 24 years old, they were actively working on their own businesses. And so I had at five or so of them that I was looking back on the files and going, okay, like now they are literally earning income from the businesses that they built themselves. And, um, and then the other one that has also kind of a handful of people was overcoming impediments. So this is where we would be working hand in hand with an occupational therapist, for example, um, or speech therapists with kids who are now, they know what their tools are for like overcoming stuttering, for example. And now it's how do I build confidence and build my life back from my impediments? So stuttering, um, tics, um, you know, just various um, things like that. Just a handful of kids. That was um, meaningful though. Um, and then the other part was, two themes around adjustment. So transition as a freshman, whether it be freshman high school, freshman college, 
but transitioning into that new phase of life. That So we, we did coaching specifically on helping kids get through that phase. And then also linked to that um, is transitions to new schools. So parents moved, new schools, new friends, new soccer team, scary, stressful, all of that stuff. Didn't want to leave my old friends in Florida. Now I'm in New York and I got to like, you know, handle that transition, right? And then we have your typical, what I call my now, and that's your all the, the school stuff, right? Workload, heavy workloads, grades, college prep, college timeline prep. So, you know, when do you start to work on planning for college? What are the things that you need to do, et cetera? And then the other stuff was like the applications and then ADHD specific. Um, clients around managing self and time management so that was kind of like I thought the theme would be like my now right and then we've had um, I would say just short of a handful of kids who actually were working into uh, desisting from addiction tech addiction vaping Mm -hmm. and the addiction whatever those are but were motivated and were ready to to you know start to work on those things so um so yeah so it's like well, let's see one two three four five six seven so eight eight themes of various things of what we have touched over the last three years and so when I look at it I'm like that is so diverse it's as diverse as it is wide you know um and you know just kind of like proud that we've actually got something to show for how we've impacted the lives of these kids and their families in just so many different ways even though there's these stereotypical broad uh, uh groups right or categories um so anyway I'm proud of where we've come I'm proud of what we have served so far and um we're now in the middle of like strategizing for what does that next level look like um, to be able to be of service to communities, you know? And I wonder sometimes when you are working with, you know, you're talking to such a wide variety of people on, on the podcast every day. And you're one of my favorites. I don't have really? yet to coach my goodness, but <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> You're preparing me and I think a lot of parents out there, maybe that don't have teens, uh, of what to come and things to expect, things I never thought of. You know, I complain that you know, the six and eight year old phase and how hard this is. And you always said, well, bigger kids, bigger problems. Right. And but never realizing all of this. Um, yeah, like I, I got a call today before from the uh, the principal mm -hmm. of the school saying your son was involved in a scuffle in recess and your son kicked the ball to someone by accident. That person came in and pushed him to the ground and then the two kids oh. were fighting. And I'm like, what? I, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Again, little problems, right? So I'm like, what? Oh my goodness, like these are things and, you know, bullying and fighting and all these things I'm gonna have to deal with. And I'm so yeah. scared about how it's gonna go down. And yeah it's just you don't know what to expect and then you yeah. I, I, I hate to say this but I, I don't know if you heard um I'm not even it was on the news about that girl who committed suicide right yep. was she from New Jersey I think it's yep. New Jersey yep. uh, after being bullied by these girls in school yep. for so long and no one did anything and now I'm right. just rambling but like Right. Really, but the kids have to go through it they, for someone to realize they, they should take their own lives. How horrible they must feel and felt right. embarrassed and bullied to get beaten up like that and on camera and made fun yeah. of. And it's just like, yep. these are all different peer pressures that yep. we didn't have. We had the making fun of and the teasing, but not now the instant reliving it and replaying yep. it on social media. I mean, yep. that oh. is, it is, it's a real thing, Jill. And you know what I'm, I'm going to be, um, I'm going to be a keynote speaker at a conference in July that is about educating on um, that coaching is often a buffer to work within before it gets bad into like now my kid needs therapy mode. It's mm -hmm. a it's a buffer that prevents kids from going down the, that black hole, you know, and I just, you know, I implore parents to keep their eyes wide open to to not be too proud 
to reach out and say, you know what? I don't think I'm equipped for this. I need support. It's okay. It's it's expected. It's what a good parent would do is say, yeah. I don't have it all. I don't understand it all. There's also so much stigma attached to parents. Like I have to look right. I have to have this facade that, you know, my family is all good and perfect and, and all of that. And it's just, nobody is in that place. Nobody. We're not, you know, I mean, no parent is immune. We work across the sociocultural cultural barriers, parents who are barely scraping it to those who are billionaires. And it does not um, discriminate. Yeah. It doesn't. These kids are going to deal with stuff regardless. They're going to de deal with bullying because they are wealthy. They're going to be dealing with bully because they're not wealthy. They're going to be dealing with bully because they're stuttering or because they're successful. It just doesn't matter. It's there. It's it's just there. Uh, yep. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Oh, my heart's breaking for his teens and what they have to go through. And it's important to have someone by your side who's also non judgmental, not just, you know. Yep good having a mom and dad and uncle but they're also it's it's a different ball game because kids yeah. treat their parents and ones close to them differently so to have a non-judgmental point of view and have somebody yeah. walk you through it it's i thank you commend you on what you do because yeah I, i'm scared i'm scared of what's going to happen to the future for not only my children but so many others out there right right and so yeah that's you know joe you know that's my passion i i want parents to have community like join my think tank every month I have a think tank on the second Friday of every month it's free don't have to pay for it but that's a safe place for you to come and say hey I need help with this or I think it's this I'm not sure I don't know what you think I don't know what questions to ask that's the forum for that place you know for parents to be so there are the resources out there just don't put yeah. the, the, bl the blinkers on just Keep those blinkers off because you'll be doing yourself a disservice. Got it. Well, thank you so much for being here. Uh, my teen life coach.com, Lisa Lane and George making his camera debut. Uh, <laughs> pleasure. I just can't believe she sits like that. <laughs> and, and can I just ask a personal question? I never had a bird. So how do you yeah. know when she has to go to the bathroom? Does she have an accident on your shoulder or does she know like she an knows. Yeah, and she'll she go knows. to like her cage or? Yeah, she'll fly or she'll she'll walk towards her space or she'll just fly there. Yeah, you say hi. So potty train too. This is amazing. And here I am. My kids wanted another cat. Our cat passed away a few months ago, so they want another pet. And the older one wants a dog. And I'm like, I can't handle myself, let alone a dog right now. But I need right. something that's self-sufficient. Not a bad yes. idea. Yes. Yeah. Oh, she goes. Are they all affectionate or is this just like... Uh, you have to train them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Them. Right. Yeah. We'll yeah. talk. Hopefully I'll be seeing you soon in person and best Absolutely. of luck to you Go. again. My teen life coach.com reach out to Liesl Lane uh, or text at 770-235-8202. Have okay. a fantastic day and um, really pleasure having you as always. Thank you. Thank sweetheart. You, are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go, and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.